Good morning. I'm Chad Stebbins from the Institute of International Studies, and thank you for coming this morning. What a terrific turnout to hear this presentation by Lauren Lant, who is a secondary education major at Missouri Southern, who will graduate in December of 2018. And you know, we don't ordinarily let students make presentations for the theme semester. Uh, but we made an exception in Lauren's case because she's such an outstanding student and has such an exceptional story to share today. We have a partner university in Seoul, Korea, Sangmyung University, and Lauren was the very first student from Missouri Southern to go to Sangmyung in the spring of 2016. So she was a trailblazer, a pioneer. Uh, her class is here today, by the way, her classroom management class, uh, to support her, not to heckle her, but to support her. Uh, so please join me in giving Lauren Lant a nice, warm welcome. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Can everybody hear me? Okay. So today, like Dr. Stebbins gave me a nice and warm, wonderful welcome. Thank you for that. I'm going to be talking about Korean education. So the title is, Are South Koreans Smarter? Or is it the education system? I'm going to be giving you a, a broad overview of the education system and then from my own personal experience when I was over there. So on the screen I have this South Korean education. And for those of you that are curious how to pronounce this, it's Han Ningguk Kyuk, which is South Korean education. So about myself, like Dr. Subin said, I am a secondary English education major. I studied in 2016 spring at Sangmyung University. Um, I spent a month in a Korean middle school when I was over there, and it was amazing. It was part of what we would call our student teaching, and so I studied and observed and taught lessons when I was over there. Um, I taught myself Korean. I'm still in the process of learning the harder words, but I can carry a conversation if you wanted to try me. <laughs> and I love Korea. I want to go back and teach there when I graduate because I just love the culture and the people and the food. The food, definitely the food. <laughs> um, so this is South Korea. It is located here in the middle next to the Sea of Japan and the Yellow Sea, and it is south of North Korea. I was stationed in Seoul. I studied there, and so I was close to the border, but I did not go to the border. Uh, these are some pictures of South Korean kids because I think they're really cute, and these are just random internet searches. I'll show you my kids that I taught later. So we're going to look at the public education system first. The public education system is funded by the government and sometimes separated into boys and girls schools, especially at the middle school and high school ages. Um, they have larger class sizes and they tend to run from 25 to 50 students. In the middle school that I was in, most class sizes were around 30, 30 students. Um, it's similar to the US education system and that they are funded by the government and it is somewhat similar, but there are major differences once you really break it down. Um, they start from 8.30 and go until 4.30, Monday through Friday. They used to go on Saturdays, half days, but they recently cut that. And so I feel that it is more similar to our education system now than it used to be. And then they have private schools. Private schools are similar to American private schools. They're privately funded, and they are a higher caliber of education, more difficult to get into, and they're not funded by the government, so they have an expensive tuition, and they're very, very competitive. And then you have what is called a hagwon. Hagwons are meant for extra studying and extra education. They are divided by age and level divisions, so you could have a class of any age and different levels within, so you could have a 30-year-old a studying with 
maybe an 18 year old, but they would be at the same level, so that's how they're divided. Uh, they have three shifts. They run from nine to five, two to nine, and then a split shift from 11 or 7 a.m. to 11 a.m. Um, smaller class sizes is because you're paying for it. And so typically you'll have 10 students, but if you really want to pay for it, you can also have just a private individual study session with a teacher and student, and they will learn and get that extra education. Um, they're privately funded and run like a business. And so you'll see a lot of foreign teachers coming to teach at Hagwans, and they will be paid for a one to two year contract. And sometimes when business isn't running well, they will break the contract. And so they're not as professional, and that's bad. Uh, the English, the English is what they usually go there for. Sometimes students go there for, for math and sciences, and especially in high school, they'll use the Hagwan to really boost their resumes and their specs. But the English is taught there from very young ages into high school and above because English is considered to be important within the culture. This is a student drawn mind map that I found that I really like because it shows like the, the good and the bad of a Hagwan. And so the student <laughs> thinks that having the mother not there is a good thing, but also a bad thing because no mother. So mixed messages. Uh, the, there aren't any toys, no freedom time. They don't have any family, lots of stress. Um, and the good things about it, need a good job. That's why they go. They study hard, and they make their mom happy. That's a very important part of education in Korea is to make the parents happy. <clears throat> okay, so I'm going to look at Korean teachers versus American teachers. Korean teachers don't spend a full career within a school system. They have a five-year lottery system, and so when the end of their five-year contract comes, they are put into a system of, of lottery, and they are sent to different schools within the area that they live in, because there are enough people, enough children that attend these schools that they have schools within 15 minutes of each other. And so once they're finished teaching their five-year period, they are then sent to different areas. And that is uh, not only teachers, it's the principals and the faculty within the school. They do not stay within one area because it helps them to get more experience. And so that way, not one teacher gets to teach at a, a higher level school or a or a lower level school. They all have different experiences. Um, Korean teachers are really involved in their students' lives, and they almost act as a mother. Um, one of the examples that I think of whenever I say provide care is um, if a student gets in trouble, if they get into a fight, and they are not in school, and they're sent to the, the police station, if a parent is not able to show up, that teacher will be called, and then the teacher will go and take care and take responsibility for that student. Um, they are lecture-based classrooms, and it's, it's one way. The teacher stands at the front and often has a microphone like I do and lectures to the students. Even in a small classroom, they cannot really project, and so they rely on the microphone. Um, they don't have group discussions like we would hear. They don't really work with partners, at least from what I experienced. And so when I had to force them to do it, it was kind of difficult, and they looked at me like I had two heads at first. <laughs> um, and rote memorization, they really rely on the studying, 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 remembering it, regurgitating it on the test, and then not really retaining the information. So I have a comparison of American test scores and dropout rates versus South Korean. Uh, they are ranked number two in education versus the 17th that we are ranked at. Uh, their graduation rate is 97%, and their um, dropout rate is 1% versus our 83 and high 6%, which that's recently our dropout rate has really 
uh, improved in the last few years. Also, our PISA scores that we can look at. We are down here at number 41 within the rankings, and they are up here at number seven within their math scores. Their reading scores are, again, number seven, right there. And then we are 24th in the red. And then our science is 25th compared to their 11th. This is the program for international student assessment. Every student internationally takes this test to rank. And these, these results come from Pearson, the education system. So this is a typical middle school classroom. And then this is a cram school classroom. So the middle school looks a little more relaxed. Everyone that's in the classroom that's in the cram school or hagwan is studying and very focused. And the teacher, as you can see, she's using a microphone because there are a lot of students within the classroom. Okay, so this is a typical study plan, how a, a South Korean student would go through the education system. They have the early childhood, primary, lower secondary, they have the entrance exam, and then they will go to either a vocational senior secondary school or a academic secondary school. And then they would get their certificate, take the CSAT, which I'm going to talk about that later, and then either go into junior college and go up through that way or just go straight to university. And then the percentage of students that actually get their master's and doctorate are very low. Most of them just get a bachelor's and then are finished with school. So elementary school broken down are ages six to 12. The core subjects are ethics, Korean language, mathematics, science, social studies, PE, music, and the arts. Over 34 weeks of schooling per year, children attend 850 hours of classes in grades one and two, 986 in grades three and four, and 1,088 in grades five and six. And then English is part of the regular curriculum. It's been part of the regular curriculum since 1997, with one hour per week assigned to third and fourth graders, two hours per week for fifth and sixth grade students. And then middle school, which was where I was placed, are ages 12 through 14. Um, in middle school, students are streamed according to the ability in mathematics, English, Korean language, social studies, and science. Uh, other core subjects which are not ability streamed include moral education, PE, music, fine arts, practical arts. In addition to these core subjects, oh, excuse me, <laughs> one second, I'm going to take a drink because I'm very dry mouth. <clears throat> Pardon me. So, students pursue extracurricular and optional courses, including home economics and technology, uh, foreign languages, computer and information technology, and environmental education. And then the annual instruction hours include all of these courses, and it's 1,156 within this level. And then high school, ages 15 through 18. This is where students really buckle down and study a lot. So they are divided into general, academic, and vocational, and then special purpose schools. And so you have um, foreign, art, foreign language, art, and science high schools are just some examples of those special education. Um, admission to, to the senior high school differs across school systems, but most of them have to take a standardized test to be able to enter that, and they have to have their junior high certificate completion to be able to enter the high school age um, schooling. And in major metro areas, this is no, excuse me. In major metro areas, designated equalization areas, a computer lottery system places the students. And so while schools in other regions that are smaller and they don't have an option, uh, they admit students based on prior academic achievement, but in the larger areas, they just send them out to wherever. Um, and uh, at a minimum, like I said, they have to have the junior high school diploma. 
And so the typical day finds a high school student studying before school begins about 8 a.m. The classes run from 45 to 50 minutes each with a morning break and then a 50-minute lunch period. The afternoon session resumes about 1 o'clock and classes continue until about 4 or 4.30, followed by the cleaning of the classroom. And then students may then take a short dinner break at home or they may eat at school before they continue on to a hug one. And so the schedule, the academic year in state schools starts at the beginning of March and runs through until mid-June, so that's their first semester. And then their second semester starts at the end of August and continues until mid-January. And then hog ones run all year long so that they can go and get extra education anytime that they need it when they want to. Uh, some holidays that they observe <coughs> are, are Tusak, which that's actually happening um, currently-ish. It just finished, I think. It was from the first until the third or fourth, correct me if I'm wrong, um, that they just observed that, and so they were out of school. And then uh, National Foundation Day, um, Winter Vacation, Christmas, New Year's Day, the Lunar New Year is very important within the Korean culture and Asian cultures in general. Um, and then they have a spring vacation for middle and high schoolers. And typically during this time period, the um, oh, excuse me, not what I meant to say. <laughs> okay, March 1st, Independence Day, Arbor Day, Children's Day, Father's Day and Mother's Day, Buddha's birthday is also observed, uh, Memorial Day, Summer Vacation, Constitution Day, and Liberation Day. Through this period, there is a time within the middle school that the kids go on a three or four day field trip, and so it gives them a break from the school, but it also uh, boosts like the sense of community within the school. And so they are in school, out of school, but also on a field trip. Uh, this is a comparison of a 14-year-old student from the United States and a 14-year-old student from South Korea. So Sujin versus Sarah. Sujin wakes up and Sarah wakes up at 6.30. They go to school at 7.20 and arrive at 7.40. Um, Sujin walks to school in this scenario, but a lot of students take the public transport system. And then they both are studying at 2.30, but Sarah, she gets to go and practice for basketball at the junior varsity while Sujin is still in sixth period. They both leave school at 4 p.m., but where Sarah's going to return home, watch TV, and do some chores, Sujin is going to go to the Educational Institute, meaning the Hagwon, for additional classes in Korean, English, and math. She's going to sleep during the break because she's tired. And Sarah's going to eat dinner and then watch more TV. And then at 8 p.m., they're going to have Sujin return home and have dinner while Sarah starts her homework. And then at 8.30, Sujin's going to get a little break while Sarah finishes her homework and updates Facebook at the same time. And then at 9 p.m., the English tutor comes to Sujin's home and she gets to practice more English reading and writing while Sarah is listening to music and checking Facebook and her other social media sites. And then, because Sujin is still studying, she's going to continue studying with the, ten, with the tutor until 10.30, while Sarah is going to bed and texting her friends. At 11, she's doing homework, Sujin, and she's doing homework from the Hagwan, and then she's going to go to bed at 1 a.m. while Sarah gets to sleep the rest of the night. So the personal schedule that I had from my middle school, Jangwe Jung Hakkyo, or Jangwe Middle School, they started at 8.30, and that was their sort of homeroom class time. And then from 9.10 to 9.50 was the first period, and then they continued. Their lunch break was from 12.30 to 1.20, and then the rest of the day until 4.15, or 3.15 to 4. So the subjects that they study are Korean Lit, Biology, Ethics, Math, Science, English, and Japanese. These were the study courses that were in the middle school that I was at and typical throughout middle schools and high schools in South Korea. 
Um, the three main subjects that are focused for on the college entrance exams are the Korean lit, math, and English. So they really study hard for those. And this is a, another picture of students. This is probably during their morning or afternoon break time when they've finished classes and they're all tired and they all just don't want to be there because heads down on desks. And so for extracurricular, sports are really just for fun. They aren't like they are in America. Um, children, if they're really good at sports, they'll, they'll really hone in on that in middle school and then be able to continue and pursue a sport in a special high school or, or in an extracurricular outside like training facility, but they don't have sports within the education system. It's just not something that they do. Uh, the, the middle school that I was at actually had a group of boys who decided to make their own volleyball league. And so they liked playing volleyball in the mornings when they had time. But that was the only time that they had to play the sport. Um, most of the awards and volunteer hours, achievements, they all are done to boost their academic specs. And so any extra time that they have outside of school when they aren't studying, they are trying to achieve and put more things onto their resumes for colleges. And students build character and independence through school. It's like a government mandated thing, but they, they take out the garbage, they sweep, they vacuum, and they clean the toilets. And then in the classrooms that I was in, they mopped the floor, they moved the desks, they swept everything, and then they would put it back and make sure everything was in alignment for the next day. And then, most students spend at least 18 hours a day studying. So there isn't really any extra time for anything else. The exam. The exam is the CSAT, or the College Scholastic Ability Test. It's also called the Sunung in Korean. Um, it's like our ACT or SAT, but it's taken only one time. They cannot take it multiple times like we do. So they really have to do well to be able to get into a good college, which that is the, the goal of every student, is to be able to get into a good college. Um, it covers five subject areas, Korean language, mathematics, foreign languages, um, the social studies sciences or vocational education, depending on which high school they went to, and a second foreign language or Chinese characters are involved in that as well. And an average 250 out of 400 is the minimum needed to pass. So the top universities, they change. But the last that I looked, they were uh, KAIST, Seoul National University, and Poheng University of Science and Technology. They, they do fluctuate depending on the, the academic teachers and like influences, outside factors. but. This is currently the top three universities. Uh, only 10,000 of the 550,000 high school graduates win places in these. And so they really have to study hard and get a good score on their synonym to be able to go. And, which is, this is really sad, but if they don't have one of those universities on resumes for job applications, then they aren't as likely to get a job. If someone else has a degree from the Korean Advanced Institute of Science and Technology and someone, the same candidate, has almost the same specs, but they don't have that college on their resume, they won't get in and they won't have the job. So Korean students and American students. Korean children spend 220 days a year in school versus 180 that they United States children spend in school. Korean students attend school from 9 to 4 officially, but often stay in school until 10 to 11 o'clock at night to study um, because they can only take the college entrance exam once. And they don't really think for themselves that most, most students are studying because their parents are forcing them to. Their parents are driving their education, and the parent is the one who sends them to the Hagwon, who pays for the education, who pays for the private schools. And college, college is set up like a high school in America, socially and structurally. The typical high school in Korea is not what you would see 
within an American high school. But once you get to college, they have more freedom and they get to think for themselves and they really, they really get to expand and they live alone typically. They will move out of the house and if they don't live in Seoul, most students like want to go and live in Seoul because that's the capital and where a lot of people and things happen. So that is the comparison between the students. Um, more about Korean students. Korean students are kinder to each other than American students are. There is a more sense of a family between them. And they, they don't necessarily have their, their cliques that they like, group off into like an American student would. And so within the classroom, they, they are kinder to each other. Um, all students wear uniforms. Every single student, every single school, every grade level. The, the only time that they're not allowed or to wear a uniform is for uh, school trips and when they, they do an end of year hike, which was what they did at my middle school. But even then, the students as a class chose what they would wear. And you'll see pictures of that later because I have pictures. Uh, students are closer with one another and then middle, student, middle school students have more responsibilities than their American counterparts. And what I mean by that is just the, the cleaning of the classroom and um, the way that they take attendance and the way that they make sure every student is there. They'll have more, more self-governing and the ability to look after each other than the American students would. American middle school students versus Korean middle school students or schools. The, the students move from class to class and the students have a homeroom. Similarities. Differences. Students have a class president and vice president per class. So when I said that they have more responsibilities than their American counterparts, the vice president will go down to the office and get the attendance book. And then the president and vice president will, as a group, take attendance, make sure it gets back down to the office. And then, like, this is all before the teacher ever comes to class. And this is um, stuff that they do and have to make sure it gets done. And then they'll have um, things that if the teacher printed out copies for a handout of the day. They'll go and get that and then they'll have it in the classroom and waiting for the teacher. Um, schedule is different. The day starts later and ends later. Um, students have a club day. They have a week schedule and then within this week, I think it's on Wednesday, Wednesday or Thursday at the middle school that I was, where they'll have the last the afternoon and go and practice extracurricular activities. So um, the students that I had, there were ones that went and had singing lessons and ones that went and played soccer. And then uh, we actually had a student who was training to be an idol, a Korean pop idol within the class, which is really interesting because she would come to school at 8.30 and then leave before the first classes ever started. She would get her homework and then she would go to her entertainment company and train in singing, dancing, um, acting, and something else. Just, just training to be an idol, which is also a very big part of the Korean culture. Um, students stay with their classes. Uh, like we would move around, we're all familiar with this, but and have different people in different classes, they would stay with their classes. And so you'll have the same class. So my class was class two, three. Class two, three moves together throughout the day and then comes back to the homeroom at the end of the day. This is actually a lesson plan that I had to make for when the students went on their field trip. There were a group of students that weren't able to go. And so I came up with a, a lesson that was the, the greeting, hello, how are you, and then choosing their own name. And uh, they, they chose an English name. I kind of went into the specifics of English names and the meaning behind an English name and why it's important to use it if you're going to go abroad because sometimes Americans and foreign 
countries aren't able to pronounce the Korean name. And so it gave them the option if they wanted to, they were able to choose a Korean or choose an English name versus their Korean name. And I thought it was really interesting because one of the teachers there that was an English teacher, she had chosen the name Cosmos for herself. And she chose it because it meant universal and sort of this encompassing, all embodying figure. And then I went and showed her um, different English names with different meanings. And she chose the name Emma because it meant universal. So I helped her choose an English name, which I thought was really cool. And then the full lesson plan that I had to do, which is different than ours. The, the reason why I'm showing is because of the differences between a full lesson plan used in American education, education people, and Korean education. So this is uh, 2016 Hakyeondo Kyoseng Shiresuk, which just means the, the school, and then Kyoseng, which was myself, the student teacher and then the practice, and then Sangmyung Dae Hakyo, which is the Sangmyung University, and then Changwe Chung Hakyo, which is just the Changwe Middle School. So you have the date and the classroom and the lesson and the person teaching, and then the breakdown text unit, and then general objectives, functional roles, teaching approach, and the, the way that they wanted us to do it was to choose what type of learning, the explicit learning, and then the approach, bottom-up approach, is what they had us do for these. And then the integration and contextualization was just using how the materials um, get used within the lesson. And then the content, they had us map it out and how we would use it. And then the prerequisites, how uh, each student would use what they had learned before within this lesson. And then the materials that we used. And then this is an example because I had them. It was an introductory lesson to what do you think about something, and then the I think that. This, so this, this verb and um, phrase that they had to use. And so this was my example within the class. So what do you think about, what do you think about the puppy, partner A, and then partner B, and then I would have them switch. And so partner B would ask this, so they both had the opportunity to practice. And when I asked them to do this, to do this partner work, they really had a hard time wanting to, to work together and focus, because that's not something that they're used to. And so this, this I had to use chocolate as an incentive to get them to work. <laughs> and it was completely like okayed by the teacher. She had chocolate in her desk. And so she, she said, if the students don't really want to work for you, just, just give them chocolate. It'll work. <laughs> and it did. OK, so here are some more pictures of just some general Korean students. As you can see, they have uniforms here and here. And this maybe be a, maybe be a little more lax, because he has on a uniform, but they don't necessarily have one on. Um, but these are just the different age groups. And then. I think that food is very important. And so within the school, they have this versus their American counterpart. So this is an actual meal that I ate. They had a different themed food and like different colored days for each week. And so this was a, a green day because the rice, if you can see, kind of is colored green. They used food dye to make it green. <laughs> and then this is tankatsu, which is a, a Japanese dish. It's just chicken that's fried. And then the sauce, and then grapes, and then a, um, a cubed radish that's been fermented. And then this, this is a bone, brew, a bone broth stew. And so it was the beef and then the bone in there, and it made it tastes really delicious. And I don't know about you, but personally, I would rather eat this than this frozen pizza, frozen corn, and pretzel, and peaches any day. <laughs> so these were my students. This is me back here. And then the teacher 
is here. So she kind of blends in with her height. Um, but these were, these were my class students, which they're so cute. I love them. Funny story, actually, the student right here, when we took the group picture, was not here. So the teacher took an individual picture of him and then photoshopped him into this group photo. <laughs> Here's some more pictures of my students and myself. We had to take selfies. It was actually part of a project that they had to do to ask me questions and then take pictures as proof because we went to the park to pick up trash, which is also part of the community service and getting involved with the community, which I thought was really cool. I wish our schools would do that. And so they picked up the trash and then took pictures with myself after asking questions. And I really, really, think that they're adorable and just really loved them. And, and if I hadn't had as good of students as I, I had, I, I think I still would have enjoyed myself, but I definitely think that the students were a big part of why I had so much fun at the middle school. And actually dealing with these students before I went to South Korea, I just wanted to be strictly high school. But after I, I got to teach and interact with these students, I kind of want to go into middle school education. Kind of. <laughs> and OK, so Teacher's Day. Teacher's Day is kind of like we do here and where we do the Teacher Appreciation Week. But they have a specific day where they set up the classroom and they bring in a cake for their teacher and they celebrate the teachers. And it's not just like, we're going to nominate this teacher and celebrate them. But no, every single teacher gets appreciated. And even myself, I got a little flower, a little fake carnation with candy inside of it. It was really cute. And I really, really appreciated it. Um, early morning activities. So like I said, they play sports in the morning. This is just a picture of a group of boys who came into school early and were playing soccer on the, the field in the school, which I thought was really cool, because that's the only time that they really get to have time for themselves to play sports and enjoy themselves. This is a picture of me teaching class. Look how involved they are. Look how engaged they are. <laughs> and then this is a picture of the school that I was at. So Jangmi Jung Hakyo was located in Seoul in this hilly area and the only flat part was where the school actually was. So every day I had to climb a mountain to get to the school. <laughs> and then once I got there, there were more stairs to get up to the third floor. And so I lost a lot of weight when I was in Korea because there are a lot of hills <laughs> and lots of, lots of walking. And then here are my babies on the hike day. And like I said, they chose their own uniform for the hike day. And so if you can see, the girls are in Elmo and the boys are in Cookie Monster. <laughs> there were other classes that had Hawaiian themed and other choices of dress, but I really, really appreciated this. And then this is a picture of something that they gave me when I finished my teaching practice there. They were really sweet. One of the reasons why I put this up here was because I wanted to showcase the different varying levels of English and to, to help you guys understand that like, I'm not just walking into this classroom and expecting to have all students be at a certain level of English. I had students who understood what I said. I had students who had no idea what I was saying and then like, the levels in between. And so one of my favorite things is this student right here. He says, hi, teacher. I was seen at first I got some afraid because your head are smaller than other guys and girls. <laughs> You just like our Korean idol head. And your high is very tall. You're taller than me, and you're taller than my father. <laughs> Teacher, I think I'm lucky to meet you. Or no, to met you. Because get learned to American isn't easy situation in Korea. Lastly, 
Thanks you give learn to me. Thank you. I'll miss you. Dear student, Musong. Which I really, it warms my heart. I really appreciate it. And I really love this. But the, the fact that he wasn't able to, to say meet versus met, and that is really important. And that's why I want to go back and help them to learn. Because learning from a native versus learning from the Korean teacher who has learned English by studying abroad or on their own within the English education department in a, in a college university is it's different. And the, the levels of English, because they don't have that group discussion, because they aren't able to talk to each other, they don't get to practice it. So they know the words, and they know some of the structures, but they aren't able to put it into use. And so getting the native speaker really helps them. And then I just really, I just really appreciated it because they were, they were all similar. It's like, thank you, thank you, thank you for teaching us. And some of them were, I love you. Some were, you're beautiful. And I was like, thank you, but. <laughs> and so on the last day, they were very sweet. And they had this set up in the middle. This is actually a group of moon pies, essentially that they put together and put candles in and gave me for my sending away. And they said it was a gesture of good luck and for future goodness to come towards me. And then they wrote this, this cute message, which was, to pretty Lauren, hello, teacher. We are two, three students. We prepared this party for your last day. We are sad, which I thought was really cute. And then, I can't read it. And then, or which means just like they're they're sad to see me go. And then, mani poko goyo, which we're gonna miss you a lot. And then, we will miss you in English, which I thought was really cool. And then there they are, all of them giving finger hearts. Finger hearts. And then another way to give hearts in Korea is this way, this way. <laughs> and so they all, they all were cute. I love them. <laughs> and that's, that's my presentation.